Hello, everyone, and welcome to week three of Social Media House. My name is Andrew Salmon, a marketing manager here at CyberPR. I've been a part of this awesome team since January of 2013, and I'm very happy to talk to you this week about the wonderful world of Facebook. Facebook is by far and away the social media site that most of you are probably using on a daily basis. However, it's one of the hardest ones to get real pickup and traction on, and the reason for this is... Well, there are many reasons. The main reason is you have to remember that Facebook was designed primarily to connect friends and family. Therefore, promoting on the site is tricky at best, and even expert marketers have trouble building loyal and engaged tribes on Facebook. Facebook currently has well over 1 billion people. It's actually 1.44 billion monthly active users, which to put into perspective, that's more than 20% of the entire world's population. The numbers are mind-blowing. And if you think about it, at the height of its use, MySpace only had about 100 million users. Here are some facts that you should definitely know. Facebook is the second most popular site on the internet following Google. 65% of Facebook users log in daily. 20 minutes is the average amount of time they spend per visit. There are more females than males on the platform. The average number of friends on a personal page is 338. That means the average person has only 338 friends that they're connected to. There are approximately 900 mobile users, which is incredible that 900 million people log into Facebook from their mobile phones. And Facebook overall gets one out of every five views that are happening online. That's a crazy number. For those of you who think that Facebook is just for young people, and you're still hesitating getting into the action, I'd still like to point out that 57% of Americans now find out about all of their news through Facebook, and the 35 and up demographic now represents more than 45% of the entire Facebook user base. It's not so much of a younger platform anymore, as a lot of the younger platforms that have come into existence in the past few years have started to take over, and the older demographic is becoming more prominent. We get a lot of questions about how to generate likes and get serious engagement on this platform. And before we dive in and go through even more stats and facts about Facebook and begin to tackle some of the techniques and tactics for truly building your social media house, we want to point out that we've met a vast number of artists and even clients who aren't artists who are buying fake likes on Facebook. And this is one of the worst mistakes that you can make. It might seem tempting to go onto a site like Fiverr or even go to Google and search how do I grow my Facebook likes and find that you can purchase 5, 10, 20,000 likes for a very, very cheap amount of money. And you'll think, this is great, my page is going to look so legit with a ton of likes. In the end, if you buy likes that are arbitrarily targeted by these services, they will not care at all about your music, your product, your good, or anything else that you post about. Luckily, Facebook has started to crack down on what are known as click farms that host dummy accounts built for the primary purpose of generating these likes. If you had a lot of these accounts connected to your profile from a previous advertising campaign in this manner, your content would continue to be served to these fake accounts, and it would leave your real fans in the dark, which is the worst case scenario. The best way by far to grow your Facebook audience is organically. And that's not to say that you can't promote your Facebook page with advertising, you just need to be smart about who you target. I always get the question, how often should I be posting on Facebook? And most studies point out that once a day is sufficient and you can even take some days off. This means that once you have mastered a strategy, it shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes per week total on Facebook for creating good, consistent, and compelling content. The lifetime of a Facebook post is something that you should really understand. The average lifetime of a post from a page is approximately three hours long. And this means that from the time that the post is published, it will continue to get pushed out to your network for three hours before Facebook stops showing it in people's feeds. The post finally dies when people stopped interacting with the post. A post is considered dead when the growth and engagement is less than 10%. That means that if no one likes, shares, or comments on the post, it goes away much faster than the posts that are frequently liked, commented on, or shared. If your content gets great interaction, it basically tells Facebook that it's interesting content and it will be more inclined to share it with more people. 
Facebook ultimately wants to provide the most interesting environment for its users. So they've built their algorithm to show the most popular content in your feed to keep its users coming back. This is why it's great social media etiquette for you to like, share, and comment on everything that you appreciate and support. Just lurking around and looking at other people's posts without engaging does not propagate overall success for you. So you want to give what you'd like to get back. Here's a graphic that we put together here at CyberPR, which shows good Facebook engagement versus bad Facebook engagement. This is the same artist, and for the record, I am a massive Chet Faker fan and have no ill will towards him whatsoever. However, I've used two of his posts to illustrate good versus bad Facebook content. On the left, you'll see an incredible amount of organic likes, comments for a well-crafted post. The first thing that you'll see is a captivating image of him with tigers in a tropical paradise, and his copy is directed specifically towards his loyal followers, thanking him for an incredible year. This post is perfectly executed, and he was rewarded with stellar engagement. On the contrary, the post on the right shows a link to a live session with World Cafe. While this could be interesting content for his fans, and the link he posted, unfortunately, is accompanied with a boring image and his update that says, quote, live session for World Cafe is not interesting or engaging at all. The post looks like he has a ho-hum attitude mentality towards the whole thing. As you can see, the engagement was much lower here. And this is why it's very important to understand when crafting your posts, what works on Facebook versus what doesn't. Here are some things that work. Posts between 100 and 150 characters are fewer than three lines of text. These get 60% more likes and comments than shares that are long because of the whole too long didn't read mentality. So brevity is key here. Here are some things that work. The most important thing you need to consider is to make sure your images are captivating and interesting. This is what's going to stop a Facebook user in their tracks, so treat this as a prime priority. Posts between 100 and 150 characters, or even fewer than three lines of text, get 60% more likes, comments, and shares than longer posts, as they're much more easy to skim. So brevity is key here for more interaction as well. If you're going to be asking questions, which is highly recommended, posts that include the words should, would, and who questions get way more responses than why and how questions. And the reason for this is that the answers to the former are usually much easier to answer and require less depth. Easy questions facilitate easy responses, and there's definitely a science to this. And once you know how to use the science and ask things in the correct way, you're just going to get a lot more organic pickup and comments coming back your way. One thing you may be asking yourself, and we've heard a lot of in the past, is do I need a Facebook fan page? And why can't I just use my personal profile? Well, here's why. Personal pages max out at 5,000 friends. And Facebook pages do not allow you to track analytics, or in Facebook talk, insights from a personal profile. That means you'll never know unless you, of course, you speak with every single person directly, constantly on your page, who's on it. Are they male? Are they female? Where do they live? What hours are they most active on your page? Etc. Etc. Only a fan page will show you these things. Also, some things really are personal. Perhaps you don't want to share photos of your kids or private things that you're still doing with your entire fan base. That's why it's great to have a personal page as well as a fan or a company page. Having said that, there should still maintain a personal touch on your Facebook fan page as it's important to convey your personality with your audience. Here are eight essentials you need to know for setting up your fan page. You want to have a fantastic cover photo, and that's the big banner that goes across the very top of your page. Of course, you want to have a stunning and beautiful smaller photo that fits the theme as well but the cover photo is essential. Pinning is a wonderful way of posting and highlighting key content to the very top of your profile. Pinning is a wonderful trick if you're promoting your fan page or to provide valuable content to first time or recurring visitors to your profile page. All you have to do is just post to your wall once and pin the content to the very top and it's there to stay until you say otherwise.
Apps are key to making your page as resourceful as possible. It helps to create a well-integrated user experience across all of your digital platforms, even outside of your Facebook presence. Milestones you can create and add to your timeline as well. I'll talk more about this later in this presentation. The fifth essential you should know is that you need to create a unique fan experience on Facebook. You want to establish a routine for your audience, creating things that your fans will be waiting for on a recurring basis. Maybe it's something as simple as Throwback Thursdays or Man Crush Mondays, or even something that you make up, like Taco Tuesday, if somehow you find a way to make that interesting. Something that brings them in and gets them to remember why it's important to come back to you for fun, consistent, compelling content. Understanding how to use messages in the admin panel are number six and number seven on this list and are very key essentials. Also, you want to understand what your landing page is. That means, where are people landing when they first come to your page? Are they landing on a professional looking page or are they looking at something that was put together in five minutes? You want to absolutely make sure that your landing page looks professional upon first visit so that all of the elements above play into this equation. Here's a screenshot on how to set up a custom URL for your Facebook fan page. Go to the username, select your new page from the drop down menu bar, then input your new username and select check availability. Facebook will let you know if that username has already been taken. You want to have a custom URL for your Facebook fan page that is consistent with all of your other web domains, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, any profile that you have. Don't just let the default with all of those numbers and letters suffice. There are three types of content that you can include in fan page status updates. The first one is just a text update where you say something, just very plain text. The next is photos and videos, and these are wonderful ways of really engaging with fans. As I mentioned before, visual content is king and will stop users in their tracks. Stats show that photos are the most shared and most engaged with things that you will see on a Facebook timeline. The third thing is an offer or an event, and you can add these to the top of the page. One of our main action sheets for this week is how to make your Facebook timeline really pop. Creating milestones is a fantastic way of getting your fans involved in your history and to give people a very quick snapshot overview of what you've accomplished over your career. This isn't something that is as pronounced and present as it used to be on Facebook, but you can still access the milestones from a public facing profile. And this is still a great way for people to really get to know where you've come from, where you've been, and where you're going. Here are some types of milestones you can add. You can add past tour dates, previous album release dates, some major press placements that you were proud of, the day that you saw an amazing concert that inspired you, the day that you were signed, the day that you were dropped from your label, the day that something phenomenal happened to you. It doesn't have to be band or music related even. For a full explanation, see this week's action sheet, and we'll walk you through exactly how to make the timeline pop. One of the most important things to understand in social media use is the basic rules for creating consistent, compelling content and we call it the three C's here at Cyber PR. For this week, we're gonna get started and practice with Facebook, but the three C's apply to every single social media site that you can use. The first way to create content is actually not so much creating content at all, but it's liking other people's stuff and engaging with them to make the connection much more strong. The next thing that you can do is ask questions which is also effective in fostering engagement and connection. Also, if there's someone that you know that has a birthday, be it somebody famous that you look up to, or just a close friend or family member that means a lot to you, wish them a happy birthday on your profile. It would mean something to your fans as well. Photo themes are fantastic as well. Perhaps it's you in the studio, or if you are a beer enthusiast and you like trying out different beers or visiting unique pubs, Anytime that I visit a new baseball stadium that I haven't been to before, I post a photo about that. It's up to you and your interests and what you want to create photo themes around. Photo contests are also extremely effective and we recommend them to all the time to our clients. 
They can be as simple as share your favorite holiday photo or share a photo you'd like me to write a song about. Video curation is huge these days, and I see this type of content all the time in my feed when I log into Facebook. Choosing videos that make you laugh or educational can be very effective. Maybe it's a TED Talk that moved you, or maybe it's something from a college humor video that made you die laughing. Maybe it's a throwback from your childhood like a great TV commercial or music video. All of these things work. Spotify and audio playlists are another great way to share content with friends. We all love music, and sharing it can be really effective. And finally, this day in history. This works especially well if there are annual events that typically trend on social media, like July 4th, or perhaps even the day that the Beatles appeared on Ed Sullivan. Any particular day or event that means something to you would likely mean something to your audience, and it would be compelling content. Here's how to jumpstart likes on your fan page. Step one is by clicking the button on the top right hand side with the three dots. And when the drop down menu comes down, you click the invite friends button. Next, click on each friend individually. And depending on how many friends that you have, this can take some time, but it'll be well worth it to get the likes onto your page. Then you just click submit. Here's how to further jumpstart likes on the page. Remember the three C's? Well, here's a great example of how you can get some more pickup from this. If you post something that's beginning to get some really nice pickup, you can pay for them to become boosted posts. And I would boost the reach to target friends of the people that like your page. I'll explain this process a little bit further in part two of this module. But the bottom line is, if you see something that you've shared that you think might have some longer legs, Try putting in a couple of dollars to see the reaction and response that you get from both people within your community and people that are connected to people that like your page. Hopefully you get a few more likes on your page this way. Another way of getting more likes is to buy ads on the Facebook ad network to drive likes. This can be a highly effective way to grow numbers if executed properly. I'll go into this a little bit further again in part two of this module. To give you a brief overview, you have several options for buying ads on Facebook. Here are two that are easiest and most common. Number one is to go directly through Facebook, and it's pretty easy to do. You just follow the rules on the page right here at facebook.com slash advertising. However, again, I will be posting a video in part two that will go in further depth of how you can go about advertising on Facebook. The second option is to use Reverb Nation's Promote It. And this is a wonderful platform because our friends at Reverb Nation have created a lot of road tested strategies that actually get better results than just allowing Facebook to do it for you. And they'll coach you on how to do it. However, I'll be, again be going a little bit deeper in advertising in part two, which will give you a little bit more confidence to do it yourself since Reverb Nation's Promote It is a paid service. The next thing that we're going to look at are the tabs on your Facebook page. Now you want to make sure that the buttons on your page are designed so that the look and the feel of the brand is completely consistent on this page. Here's an example of how we did ours, but yours are going to look probably a little bit different depending on the plugins that you feature on your page. You definitely want to make sure that one of those buttons is your music app or an app that utilizes things that you use consistently, such as YouTube or Twitter. Here are five Facebook apps that I would highly recommend for showing off your stuff. You absolutely need to have a music tab, and one of the ones that we recommend is Bandpage, which used to be called Root Music, and we like this one best because it integrates more than just music, but it integrates many other third-party apps like Spotify, Shazam, Google, SoundCloud, YouTube, and many, many others. If you're a touring artist, we highly recommend you use Bands in Town, and we highly recommend that you connect it with your Facebook page. If you make a ton of videos and you show them online, then you definitely want to have a YouTube button on here. Now, you only have three buttons to work with here, so you want to make sure that you choose them wisely. If you like asking questions on Facebook, then you can try Poll Daddy as one of your tabs on Facebook. Or if you're going to be doing live stream shows, Ustream can be a fantastic key app to feature on this page as well. 
there are two ways to engage on Facebook. One is as your personal page, and one is as your Facebook band page. Facebook actually does allow you to engage as your page, and you can do this by following the two arrow examples right here. Engaging as your page is key and important in order to get more pickup and more engagement. I know you might be used to engaging as your personal self because it's easier, you can respond in different ways, you can invite people to events, but I don't recommend it all the time. Engaging as your page is key, especially in terms of gaining visibility for yourself. Facebook Insights, which are the internal analytics that Facebook provides you, will help you keep your finger on the pulse of your fan base. By looking at your insights regularly and consistently, you'll learn much more about who your fans are. You'll get to learn where they exist, where they live, are they male or female, how old they are, etc. This will also allow you to be more effective in planning your content. It'll also ensure that your content is consistently reaching your fans. If you all of a sudden discover that you've got way more males and females and you're tending to post things that are much more feminine, you might want to switch your content strategy. You also want to do determine what types of content your fans are most likely to engage with. Are they questions? Is it humor? Is it history? Is it heady topics? Is it serious discussions, politics? You want to always be looking at your analytics on your insights. So that's how you can determine the best plan for your future. Here's how to view your Facebook insights, and here are the metrics that you should focus on. The people talking about this page is much more important than the total likes. The people talking about this means the amount of people that have come to your page have shared, liked, or commented within the last seven days. The total likes, remember, can be fake numbers. So if the total likes number is huge and the talking about this is very small, then chances are good that if you're posting consistently that you've got a problem. You'll be able to see it now a thousand miles away when visiting other people's pages. All you have to do is take a look at the talking about this number in relation to their total likes, and you will know right away if they've gained the system at some point over the course of their career. You'll also want to look at your weekly total reach, meaning how many people are really seeing your posts. You'll also want to examine your most engaged posts. This will give you a solid indication of what's working in your content strategy. You also want to look at the most engaged days of the week in your audience. Obviously, if you know that Wednesdays or Thursdays are the best days, you want to make sure that you never miss an opportunity to post on your most engaged day. You also want to look at the demographics of your overall fan base, like we talked about previously. Finally, I want to wrap this up by again repeating that buying fake likes and trying to game the Facebook system will get you absolutely nowhere, as your posts will just get sent to these profiles instead of the people that actually matter to you. Organic growth and understanding the basic rules of engagement, even though they feel slow and arduous, is the way to win the arms race on Facebook. Also, that remember that ROI, or the return on your investment conversation, is happening at every level, from Fortune 10 companies all the way down to independently owned businesses, to independent singer-songwriters, and every other form of independent artists such as yourselves. Don't feel discouraged if your Facebook number is not like your MySpace number used to be several years ago if you come from that era, or if you've got tens of thousands or even multiple hundreds of people on your mailing list, or on Twitter, for instance, and you just can't seem to get the numbers to increase on Facebook. A long-term strategy, by posting every single day, will see those numbers lift. Having said that, as we will discuss in the next few weeks here at Social Media House, you really want to make sure that you're using Facebook to leverage your other communities and assets. You want to be using Facebook to capture as many email addresses as possible for your newsletter list and for connecting with people that you've actually met. It's not all just about people that you're engaging with online. While all of this digital stuff is important, people live and breathe for the genuine human connection when the opportunity presents itself. Okay, I think we all deserve a little bit of a break from hearing me talk. So go download your action sheets, fill them out, and make sure that you come back for part two where I'll discuss Facebook groups and Facebook advertising in much more depth. See you on the other side.